Go, Mark. Five Thank you. Go. Take one. <laughs> CBS presents this program in color. From Television City in Hollywood. The Red Skelton Power. No need to shop around on your dial. We've got a lot in store. Your enjoyment should be in the bag Our guest stars Buddy Epson Jackie and Gail David Rose Thank you very much, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, we just had a little accident backstage there. One of the fellows on the show is studying karate, and he burped and went like this and killed himself. <laughs> it's nice out here, though, at this time of the year, but with all the rain we had down in Palm Springs, some of the roads are washed out to getting into Los Angeles, you know, and they got a lot of detours. I came to one that says, passable but dangerous, and the next sign said, proceed at your own risk. And the next sign said, how'd you get this far? <laughs> Hey, oh, another thing. Did you read in the paper that the dentists, they claim that kissing causes cavities? <laughs> I never realized about kissing, but I know now what to call that group that has 32% more cavities. <laughs> Swingers! <laughs> and the dentists all over the country, they got alibis now. They can go home at 3 o'clock in the morning all covered with lipstick, and they say to their wives, research, dear, research. <laughs> and they got new slogans for the uh, dental association now. One of them is... Uh, be careful on dates or you'll soon need plates. <laughs> <laughs> I like the old slogans like, be true to your teeth or they'll be false to you. <laughs> hey, for the youngsters in the audience, for the youngsters, your little tip about brushing your teeth. When you brush your teeth, always, br always brush them up and down, never sideways. Use flatter the wallpaper. <laughs> Hey, you know, it's a great fad with young kids nowadays, they, whether they need it or not. It's a new fad, especially out here in California, is, uh, is braces on their teeth. They put braces on and they kiss each other. Just see the sparks fly. <laughs> I, I wore braces when I was a kid for six years. My teeth came out straight, but my lips were crooked. <laughs> I used to go with a girl. She had teeth down to here. <laughs> she said, hello, and snap your tie. <laughs> She could eat corn at 20 paces. <laughs> she looked like a crowded graveyard. <laughs> and she lost one front tooth, and she looked like a picket fence with a gate open. <laughs> she only paid a dollar for them. They were buck teeth. <laughs> it has been kind of cold out here. Last night it was so cold, my teeth were chattering. <laughs> And they made such a noise that I finally got up and put them out of, took them out of the glass and, and put it out, forget it. <laughs> my tongue just got wrapped wrap around my eye tooth and I couldn't see what I was saying. Then. <laughs> Try it again. <laughs> so cold last night, my teeth were chattering and they made so much noise that I finally got up, took them out of the glass and put them back in. It was hardly worth going back. <laughs> 
Hey, a little boy, a little boy went to the dentist, and he says, I don't want anything done to my teeth. He says, I don't want nothing done to my teeth. He says, because I can't stand any pain in my mouth. Can't stand pain in my mouth. The dentist says, you won't feel a thing. He said to the nurse, get that hat pin. When I yank, you jab. <laughs> he said, yank, ooh, dee. He said, you feel any pain in your mouth? He says, no, but I didn't think the roots went down that far. <laughs> And you know who I really admire, though, is the comedian Terry Thomas. You know, the English uh, comedian who has those big parts in his teeth? He's the only... <laughs> <laughs> He's the only man in the world can eat cherry, smile, and spit out the fits at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got a joke. Gertrude and Heathcliff. Gertrude and Heathcliff, the two seagulls, see? He says, did you hear what happened? Polly the penguin... A pelican. <laughs> Polly the pelican is getting a divorce from, uh, from Herman the duck. She says, no. Well, why on earth would she divorce old Herman the duck? She says, after all these years, she found out she can't stand quackers in bed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'd like to do a little pantomime now for you about a dentist's office. I'd like to give you my impression in pantomime of a little nearsighted dentist. A nearsighted dentist. Musical guest stars, Jackie and Gabe. If you're feeling sad and lonely, there's a service I can render. Tell the one who loves you only, I can be so warm and tender. Call me, don't be afraid, you can call me. Maybe it's late, but just call me. Tell me and I'll be around. When it seems your friends desert you, there's somebody thinking of you. I'm the one who'll never hurt you Maybe that's because I love you Call me, don't be afraid You can call me Maybe it's late, but just call me Tell me and I'll be around Now don't forget me Cause if you let me I will always stay by you You gotta trust me That's how it must be There's so much that I can do If you call, I'll be right with you you and I should be together Take this love I long to give you I'll be at your side forever Call me, don't be afraid you can call me Maybe it's late but just call me Tell me and I'll be
Skelton as Clem Cadiddlehopper and Buddy Ebsen as Jed Clampett in Shine On Harvest Goon. Clem! Clem Cadiddlehopper! Oh, dang that boy of ours. He's supposed to be here painting that barn. You know, he can't remember anything. You know, Ma, every morning when he wakes up, I've got to remind him to breathe. I know my cue. Tiptoe through the pasture. When the bull comes, you run fast, you. Well, you're not going to just stand there and say good morning to your ma. Morning, ma. <laughs> you got very friendly. You numbskull. Do you, do you know you knocked your ma on the well? No, the only song I know is... Tiptoe through the back. Wham. Naughty daughter, my name is Barbara. Wham, now think. What's the first thing you do when your ma falls in the water? Well, before you drink it, you better boil it. Huh? <laughs> How you doing, ma? Oh. Why don't you give her mouth mouth a recitation? No, sirree. The last time I did that, we got married. Yeah. And then, and then you were born. Well, could have been worth I could have lived. And then dry yourself off, Ma. Yeah. And as for you, yeah. you paint this barn and paint it pronto. Okay. We don't have any pronto. All we got is red. We don't have any of them Mexican colors. Uh, oh, get to work. Hurry up. All right. Well, I'll grab the lighter. Yeah, just a minute. There's Lord, a... I, my name is Barbara. <laughs> Just one second. Mm. This here ladder. Yeah. It only has one rung, and it's on top. Well, naturally, when I paint, I have something to stand on. <laughs> now, Clem. I love that reading you gave there. That was good. Now, Clem, I don't want to burn... What's that up the road ahead? <laughs> well, you pay attention to me. I don't want to burden you with advanced thinking. No. But to get to that top rung up there, you've got to have one down here. Do you understand that? Everything except one thing. What's that? What's the rung? <laughs> the ladder rung! The ladder rung! I didn't hear anything! <laughs> what are you, some kind of a nut? Ladders don't rung! Bells rung! Ladders clung! <laughs> Clem, you just can't paint the top of that barn from a bottom rung. Well, then, why don't we do this? Why don't we have the bottom rung marry the top rung, and then maybe all their troubles will be little rung. better put an idiot card up here because I ain't going to look down, buddy. <laughs> Clem! Yeah? Clem, Clem, that's against the law of gravity. Well, maybe the Supreme Court will make it unconstitutional. <laughs> Wasn't that kind of stupid? It certainly was. A growing woman. 
sticking her face in my paintbrush. <laughs> Flame Cadiddle Hopper, you painted your, your ma's face red. What, what are people going to say? Well, let her blink real fast. You think she's a stoplight. <laughs> people just don't go around painting their mothers. Whistler did! <laughs> But she was on her rocker. You're off yours. <laughs> Just look at Hello, that. Hello, Red Just look at that, Clem Cadillhopper. Your ma is a mess. Well, you want to know you married her. <laughs> Hold on, ma. You get cleaned up. And as for you, I'll finish this job. You will. Yes, I will. I've got an idea, an idea for you. What? You remember that old neighbor, neighbor of ours, Jed Clampett? Yeah. The one who went to Beverly Hills? Yeah, he owned his own cow. That's owned right. Owned his own cow. Right. And one day when he was milking her, he struck oil. He must have pulled too hard. <laughs> <laughs> now, Clamp, yeah. if you write him a letter, I'll bet you you'll have a job. I'll have a job trying to write the letter, yeah. <laughs> now, get going. All right, I'll go to the city. I'll take this ladder in case I have to get up early. Oh, Clamp. Clamp, when you get to the big city, are you going to miss your pa and your ma? I'm going to miss you, pa. Well, you're going to miss your ma? I ain't missed her yet. Hey, ma? <laughs> Keep treading water. Ma, I'll be back on Mother's Day. <laughs> Send in Jed Clampett, please. Oh, Jed, what's that you got on your feet? Well, I just bought new shoes. Well, uh, why are you wearing the boxes? Well, nobody pays any attention to a millionaire in Beverly Hills, but when you're wearing shoe boxes, they sure point you out. <laughs> Mr. Clampett, you have a problem. Your business investments are making too much money. Every time you breathe, you make another thousand dollars. Well, I could lay off one of my nostrils. <laughs> Tax-wise, the only way that you can keep the money that you make is by losing it. Well, I could throw it away. Well, no, that wouldn't be fair. I'd be in competition with the government. <laughs> yes, come in. Pardon me. But there is something out here to see Mr. Clampett. Something? Well, it might be one of my relatives. Send it in. This way, please. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. You've been very kind. That's the nicest lady. I walked into the, audit, into the office, and she said yes, and I didn't even ask her. <laughs> now, that is the dumbest thing I ever heard. Mm. Yep, his brain is all thumbs. Uh, he is too brick shy of a load. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be Clem Cadiddlehopper, would you? I wouldn't if I didn't have to. <laughs> yeah, that's Clem, all right. He's got all his buttons, but the threads are a little loose. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you look nice. You sure dress hokey, don't you? Now, don't get me nervous. <laughs> are you nervous? Huh? I'm nervous as a cow with a buck-tooth calf. <laughs> <laughs> Well, back to the show. Back to the show. Well, <laughs> sir. Oh, what I give for an answer. <laughs> you know, if you don't give me a job, I'll put myself in that file over there under a different name, and you'll never find me again. Uh, I've got an idea. Let's put his stupidity to work for us. Now, you back him in any kind of business, and he'll lose so much money that you will make a fortune in income tax refunds. All right. Sounds like a good idea. Clem? <laughs> what a horrible place to hide cheese. <laughs> How would you like to be my partner? Why, Mr. Clampett, you mean that uh, you're proposing? I mean my business partner. Suppose I let you manage a store of mine, say a jewelry shop. A jewelry store? Oh, boy. I'll work like a slave. I'll kill myself for you. I'll do anything. Anything you say. Okay, you start tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Isn't that a little early? <laughs> Wow, 
There goes the food budget. Don't be silly, George. I'll get four meals out of that roast. And this cheese will last two weeks. It better. You wouldn't want me to buy second best, would you? Well, no, but... So that's why I buy the best aluminum foil as well. To keep food fresh so nothing goes to waste. Reynolds wrap, huh? Uh Uh-huh. Reynolds wrap. That's the foil with flexible strength. Reynolds wrap is oven-tempered for flexible strength. Yes, oven tempering gives Reynolds Wrap the perfect combination of strength and flexibility. Flexible strength to resist cracks and tears, to mold easily, hold tightly. It lets you wrap, unwrap, and rewrap time after time, meal after meal. So when you buy the best, give it the best protection you can get. Reynolds Wrap is oven tempered for flexible strength. Darling, you're the smartest shopper in town. That's more like it. Now, Jed, you've invested over $4 million in this jewelry business. But remember, the more money you lose, the less taxes you have to pay. Well, with Clem as manager, I reckon my money will disappear faster than a French chef in the White House. (laughs) I'm Mrs. Gottlieb, a wealthy dowager. I'd like to see something uh, very vulgar in diamonds. (laughs) New ink, heel. Newton Alt Newton Sit That's nice, Newton Well, just browse around, madam Mr. Cadiddle Hopper will be right out To kill the sale Right Oh, um, uh, Mr. Cadiddle Hopper, are you uh, tied up in back? No, I'm tied up in front, I'm buttoned up the back (laughs) Want a fig, Newton? Oh, there. Oh. Get them pets out of here. No. Oh, how do you do, ma'am? Something for you or something for the cork of spaniel there? That is my husband. It is? Well, personally, I think you got the run of the litter. Oh, he's doing fine. He'll never sell her any jewelry. Yeah, we can get now. He's got all the charm of a sticky doorknob. <laughs> oh, hey, man. Maybe the lady would like some uh, level ears. Oh, her ears look level. (laughs) It's the rest of her that's kind of (laughs) lumpy. Say, fat lady, how would you like them red earrings? You look like the back of a buck. (laughs) This is a wonderful necklace. Imagine how it would look around my throat. Yeah, to take the slack out of your wrinkles there. (laughs) Uh, uh, May I see that ring in the case? See the ring in the case? Yes. Well, if you can get in there, fat lady, go right ahead. <laughs> Just tell me how much the ring costs. Oh, that's $10,000. The battery's a little dead. <laughs> no, I was kidding. That's the kind you plug in the wall. Oh. You see, that it's $10,000. $10,000, three for $25,000. Well, I don't know. Oh, you better think. With every $100,000 purchase, we validate your parking ticket. <laughs> I like it, but it, but it is too large. Well, we can make it bigger now. Do you want your finger bigger or the ring smaller? <laughs> hey, my finger. Can't you send it to the repairman? Why send it to the repairman? He's got a handful of fingers now. You can... <laughs> we'll get this right into the <laughs> Next week, Carmen. <laughs> Knuckles. What are you griping about? I've seen better looking knuckles than sauerkraut. Are you? <laughs> you nincompoop. I'm a what? A nincompoop. And don't you forget it. <laughs> with, with my income, you'd be pooped too. Now, now what, look what you've done. I can't get it off. Well, wait a minute. Here, here. I'll tell you what to do. It, um, uh, um, boy, that finger looks like a foot. You know that? <laughs> He's breaking my finger. Do something. Gladly. (laughs) Here, can I get it off of there? Uh, Now, get it off. I don't care how. That's what I thought you'd say. I saw. 
I see the soul. <laughs> you said you didn't care how. Here, well, there must right be there. some other way. Now, don't worry. I have nothing to worry about. I used to be a butcher. I'll have this open. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll, I, can, I can hammer it through. No! Okay, well, here, we got to get it off. I'll tell you what you do. Put the, the finger in the mouth. Now, put your teeth against the finger. <laughs> I swallowed it. Pig. <laughs> Since you swallowed the ring, we'll be more than happy to take the loss. You mean the ring is covered? It's covered, but your stomach's got it surrounded. Losing <laughs> money is our business, and Clem here is helping out. Yes. My throat. I'll never be able to talk again. Oh, I'm sorry. To Come, Newton. Oh, look, lady, you don't understand. Uh, hey, fat man. Come. Yes. You know what you've done to my wife? No, what, Newton? You made her lose her voice. Well, that ought to be worth something, Newton. It certainly is. Here's my check for the pearls and the ring. Well, thank you, Newton. Hey, I got you some more money. Oh, no. Now you did it, Clem. I need money like a centipede needs bunion. But don't worry, I'll get you another tax loss. Yeah, well, there must be some way for a man to lose money without getting married. A hundred thousand dollars. It don't look like much to me. Gets a one and then it comes ought, 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 double ought, ought, nothing. <laughs> is terrible. We opened this place so you could have a tax loss and he's selling more jewelry than a dime store. Well, listen, he's taking a long lunch right next door and with a little luck, maybe he'll, he'll get lost on the way back. I hope so. Get them while they're hot. Get them while they're hot. Moron calling. <laughs> well, he's selling jewelry door to door. Yes, you bet well, I am. Who would buy jewelry from you? Well, that, um, that Hungarian actress bought them, Ja. You mean Ja Ja? Yeah, I can never remember her second name. <laughs> here, there you are. Here, take this stuff, will you? There, and there's some money down there. You can have that, too. Take the fine note. We'll put it right there, because I'm going back out on the street again in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Clem? Yes? It's high time you and I had a little man-to-man -man talk. You mean about birds and bees? <laughs> it's about money. Well, birds and bees don't talk about money. All they do is sing and uh, sing. I ain't getting through. You want to have a shot at him? I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Clem, there are times when a rich man like Mr. Clappert uh, has to lose money in order to make money. Mm -hmm. no, I'll go along with that. Do you understand it? No, but I'll go along with that. <laughs> but when you get into high finance, Clem, there are some items that we call deductible, huh? Now, I know all about deductible. You do? Yes. When you're sick, you have to pay deductible. <laughs> I don't know what for. When Clem was born, he, we wasn't sure if he come from the maternity ward or Montgomery ward. <laughs> Clem, I, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but somebody has to be fired from this organization and you're elected. I'm elected? I wasn't even running. <laughs> Well, grab five and exit. What's that? Oh, some crooks are robbing the bank across the street. I better phone the police. Now, wait a minute. Now, suppose those bandit fellas come over here and robbed us. Wouldn't that count as a tax loss? <laughs> you know, Mr. Clampett, you're a better tax expert than I am. Yep, and if they shoot me, I'll just hang on and wait for Medicare. Right. <laughs> oh, howdy there, bank robbers! Mighty proud to have you come in here and hold us up. Now come right over this way, fellas. The safe is loaded and the cash register is open. Yeah, what you can't carry, we'll deliver free. Come on in. All right, now don't nobody move. All right, put that over there on the counter. Quick. Make yourselves to home. Diamond rings are in the case there. Watches are over there. If you don't see what you want, just ask for it. <laughs> Some drunken music musician just gave me this. <laughs> We'll explain this joke later, folks. Oh, customers, 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 customers. All right, now reach for the ceiling. Boy, my re arms don't reach that far. How about telling you some jewelry, huh? How about some jewelry? Uh, hold on. Hold on there, Clem. Well, I've got to help these two gentlemen here. No, 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 Clem. If you 
Shh, let him go. Maybe somebody will shoot him. <laughs> hey, all right, gentlemen, now let's weigh this up. You've got about two pints worth of diamonds and about a half a quart of pearls there and some silver. That should come about to two handful of loot. Hey, 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 no, 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 wait a minute. That dough in that bag is ours. We stole it from the bank. Oh, what's the use of stealing money if we can't enjoy spending it? Live a little! Yeah. 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 Boy, boy. That clam can make more mistakes than a nearsighted rooster. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. Well, now, let's see. What else can I tell you? Say, how would you like some nice diamond-studded uh, 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 cufflinks? Cufflinks? Yes. I only have short sleeve shirts. We'll pierce your ribs. <laughs> nice going, son. You caught the bank robbers. Who's the owner of this shop? Unfortunately, I am. Well, you're lucky, mister. You'll collect the $50,000 reward for capturing these crooks. <laughs> Another $50,000? Well, We're ruined. Oh, boy, those old quarters are heavy. Clem, if you want to work for me, come back a thousand years from today. A thousand years, Doc. You got a calendar? Why? Well, I ain't coming back to work on no holiday. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like for you to meet our guest star of the evening, the star of the Beverly Hillbillies, my dear friend, Mr. Buddy Ebsen. <laughs> Finally got to introduce you, you don't look a day older. <laughs> You know, buddy, I bet a lot of people in the audience, the youngsters, I mean, that watch this show, I'll bet that they don't remember you from the Ziegfeld Follies or motion pictures as a great dancer. <laughs> they do remember your dancing. Well, either that or they're applauding because I quit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. You know, I've always wanted to be a dancer. Okay. I've sort of wanted to ache to go in the ballet, sort of a ballet ache. You know? <laughs> Well, you want me to teach you? Would you teach me a little? Well, bit? I'm a little rusty, but I could try. You're rusty. I'm getting corroded. <laughs> now, Red, I'll do a little step, and then you try it right after me. All right? All right. Yeah. When I dance, I, I'm pigeon toed. <laughs> Hi, George, you haven't got it. <laughs> I'm going to have it tomorrow, though. <laughs> but now, look, here's an easier one. What? <laughs> Rough voice, wasn't it? <laughs> have you ever thought of singing? <laughs> No, that's a good idea, though. Most I can do is bruise my tonsils. <laughs> Let's see. Now, I, I try this after me. Um, Jimmy cracked corn, and I don't care. My master's gone away. I know why. <laughs> <laughs> Two albums you're full of. <laughs> yeah. Jimmy cracked corn, and I don't care. His master's going away. You, <laughs> you know, for a stand-up comic, you sure fall down a lot. <laughs> Now, our uh, musical guest stars tonight are making a return appearance on our show, Jackie and Gail, along with Buddy Ebsen, Tom Hansen dancers, and the Alan Copeland singers.
kind of a crowd in our place. The coffee's hot and the music is loud in our place. We do a dance that'll give you a chance to be young once more. See what we mean just by making the scene inside this door. Come on along and we'll save you a seat in our place. You can't go wrong when you're stomping your feet. To be a millionaire We don't Working and living like a square We don't Who wants a jacket lined with Ten dollar bills And capture the thrills Of Beverly Hills Who wants the opera and ballet We don't Change all your diamonds twice a day We don't Who wants a home in Rome with a view I don't all we want is you. Who wants to pick it with a sign? I don't. Dress up in fancy clothes like mine? I don't. Who wants to walk around with long shaggy hair and sing on the air like Sonny and Cher? Who wants this cozy kind of spot? I don't. Who wants the world to go to pot? I don't. Who wants a motorcycle for two? He won't. No, I don't, cause all I want is you. The Silent Spot, starring Red Skelton as Fumble the Magician.
This is that beer joke, folks. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
in a minute. Here he is again, Red Scalpel. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of our sponsors and staff. We sincerely hope that our entertainment and our products have brought happiness into your homes. So until next week, we'll say good night for now, and may God bless. Good night. Thank you. <laughs> Shop and roll all the cards out. We have to clear the shelves. Next week we'll be here singing our hearts out while you enjoy yourself. So goodbye until the moment when we'll see you all again. To our friends near and far, Betty This is Art Gilmore speaking.